everybody, Carl's back here, uh, NPS Neo Project Shadows in the by now. Um, I'm back for another episode of uh, Let's Play. We're actually changing gears a little bit here, still sticking to a Sega theme, but uh, I'm going to show you guys some of uh, Fantasy Star Online 2. Uh, this is my character, kind of modeled her after like an 80s uh, anime sci-fi theme here, kind of going with the like, dirty pair here. Go into the game. Oh, uh, for anybody who's played Fantasy Star Online 1, you can still play with the loading screens in Fantasy Star Online 2, which is a little thing, but I love it. Also, uh, so everybody knows, this game isn't out in the US yet. I play on the Japanese servers. But, uh, as you can see from my character's screen name that you've seen before, I'm usually on ship 2. So if anybody else plays this, get, you go ahead and look at me there. Oh, before I continue on, just so, uh, everybody sees this, I'll go ahead and show it a little bit. In this game, it'll probably do it in the uh, American version too. But they, uh, on the screens on your ship, they actually give you updates to the game that are coming up before the video. They're pretty cool to watch. I'm sure a lot of you by now have seen people's Let's Plays just talking about the gameplay and stuff like that. And honestly, if you've played the uh, Fantasy Star Portable or Universe games and, like, Fantasy Star Online, this isn't going to be all that, uh, deep You can't just run into, uh, free exploration places until you've freed up, uh, a certain number of quests per area. But, uh, I'm just giving you a quick look, look view around the ship here. See, uh, see that there? I'm having a little bit of lag on my modem's part, but that is the, uh, model the game gives when the character hasn't loaded up completely yet. We'll see her later, though. I'm gonna add her to my team once I head out. You actually get usable NPCs that you can have as teammates. Oh, there she is! Meet Lisa. She is the most hyperactive robot I've ever met in a video game. A little too much. Overbearing is not quite the word I use in personality. Alright, let's uh, show you guys. I was going to show you guys the second area of the game, the caves. And the second boss, because as interesting and as nice looking as the, uh... Uh, field is for forest. The boss isn't all that interesting. It's not as interesting as fighting a dragon. You actually name your parties uh, in this one, like in the others, and give it passwords. It's something to be familiar to if you've played the others. If anybody ever wonders about my parties, my uh, party name is always Flowin'. Like, uh, he's kept flowing from, uh, Fantasy Star Episode 2, uh, Online Episode 2. And password is always Rico. Normally I play so well, but if anybody actually asks me to come with them on something, uh, I'm up for that. More of a playing around with the little loading tube. You can see the little icon moving around there. I love that touch. By the way, uh, Fantasy Star in Japan is having, I believe, what's its uh, 25th anniversary now, which is great. Uh, I love the series in general. The, the, the Genesis ones, you've got to check them out because they have like these little manga-style cutscenes that are <laughs> kind of cool. And in this one, as I said before, you get NPCs that you can add to your party, but you have to do prerequisites to get them, and I've been doing a bit of playing around. Lisa? And my incredibly stoic force friend. I'll show them a little bit here. That's Marlu. Uh, she almost has no personality. It it's weird. She acts more like a robot than the robot does. The robot actually kind of acts like how I'd expect somebody like Marlu to, but I, I think 
that might have been part of the joke. This place might be kind of familiar if you've played through Fantasy Star Online 1, because it somewhat uh, resembles the caves from that game. Except for it looks a lot nicer now. We're just going to move our way through here, make sure I'm set to my gun. Yep. The particular weapon I'm using right now is uh, what I'd expect from something that would be like a gun blade, not like something that's just a sword where you hold it. It's actually something that you switch between a gun or a sword. I believe the first time they used it was Fantasy Star uh, Zero. What I just picked up there is a uh, piece of furniture. This game is free, it'll be free in the US as well, but certain features like owning your own room happen, uh, that, that they're for faces. So, I, I store the Until then, I'm kind of What I just did there was actually a weapon technique. I'm using a 360 controller to play this it's fully compatible with it. And basically, the, uh, the yellow, the Y button, uh, controls whatever special technique you have equipped to your weapon. Now, that's something that they did a lot in Fantasy Star Universe, so for those of you who've played Universe a lot, you'll definitely know what I'm, uh, talking about here. I'm not going to bore you with fighting every enemy through this place, but it gives a good uh, example of what it looks like in this time. Oh, yes, the caves actually close off doors every now and then. Your Majesty, code, elimination. The forest doesn't do that. It's a little trick. Something from Fantasy Star Online 1 that they changed for this one, like, a lot, is being- Oh! It's stuck in a trap. Well, I was going to say is being able to shoot and move. Oh. I didn't quite make that dodge very well, but, um... The... <laughs> I think... The... R button, the R trigger, will allow you to do dodges. Depending on what you, are. you can choose uh, different classes when you make your character. So essentially, you've got several characters in one, so you can switch to other ones and level up. It kind of uh, resembles the job system in some of the fantasy games. You can also link your uh, special abilities on your weapons as well. It's really cool. Keep in mind that that blue bar at the bottom below my life, as I use special abilities for my weapons and defeats, it will regenerate on its own. But obviously, if it's out, you can't. Another thing I like about this character type Completed. It looks pretty cool. Is it, if any of you have ever played the Sega game on the original Xbox called Gun Valkyrie, a lot of the armor and look for this character kind of reminds me of that. Pretty awesome. Marlu, you, you gonna heal me? Oh, one thing I gotta say that I'm not liking about this very much is I wish I could control what my party members were doing. Like, give them commands. Oh, got another trap. But, uh, give them commands. And I wish I could do that, because there's times that I really need healing. And 
then Marlu won't do it. And then when I don't need it, she will. The AI is a little weird. Suka. Suka. Inai. There are so many weapon types to use in this game, but I mostly stick to this one because I can switch to the I'm getting hit more often than usual, but I think that's due to the, uh, the lag. Seems to be a busy night. The game's supposed to be coming out early this year. At least that's what the website says, but for anybody who wants to check out the uh, game early, uh, Kotaku, I believe it's still up there, but Kotaku has a guide for how to sign up and download the Japanese client. Oh, these guys. In this game, they call them Darkers, but they are uh, remnants of Dark Falls. So they, well, for those who are familiar with the series, Dark Falls is a, uh, an extraterrestrial entity with no body or form. He, he takes the for, uh, like a physical form depending on what kind of uh, flesh matter he makes his own body with. Otherwise, he's just basically a massive creature. Well, these things here, from what I've been able to gather, I don't, I don't read the uh, kanji. From what I've been able to gather, they're kind of children. In this game, you're actually playing as uh, arcs. And uh, for anybody who's played Fantasy Star Online, Three, or episode three, which <laughs> actually had to go through that. There's people that are are good at the card game, and then others that think it's a terrible idea. But the plot to it basically shows the uh, guardian forces and the uh, arcs that split off from uh, were fighting over how best to use the technology they developed on uh, Ragall in the first game. And uh, Arx broke off from that and left the system to go find new planets. And that's who you're playing in these. You're, you're playing the people who left Ragall. So you're not on the same planet you were on in the first one. This is the same timeline and plot, but it's not in the same location. In fact, you actually go to different planets in the same system through the course of the game. Now, as I said before, you don't have to fight every enemy to move forward. There are times where they require you to, but you don't have to. Normally, I'll fight everybody. I'll just beat it, like, literally everything I want. You but for the sake of the video, I don't think you guys just want to see a whole lot of time of just me fighting random stuff. <laughs> I just jumped off the ledge. There are English patches to this game. Oh, one major. But uh, keep in mind that it does technically void the user agreement for the uh, game because you're modifying Suka. part of it. Suka. And whereas you're not cheating, it's just the English patch, just keep in mind that uh, if you're talking on any official forums about the game, I would leave out. It doesn't uh, translate everything. You're, all it really does is translate your essential menus. Stuff like that. Which I find cool because a lot of the... Uh, Intricacies of what you're doing for mission descriptions and stuff like that, which they do translate, are in kanji, and I did not get that from the Japanese language class. As you can see from the upper map there, or the map in the upper right corner, I'm looking for the door to the next area, which on the edge of a uh, location will show up as like a little triangle. 
These things here, I've already activated that one, but they trigger certain things that have to do with the level. Ones that look like a rectangle are actually uh, story elements. I love how much action is in this one compared to the other. You still have your timing that you have to do for things if you don't feel like, you know, just spamming your attacks. If you time your attacks, you actually get more power out of it. But it's not like the first game where if you didn't time your attacks, you couldn't even continue to attack. Oh, that's... I'm gonna feed my mag. The mags are still back in this one. They are back in this one. You can still feed them and they grow and they grow. Works a little bit differently, but we'll get used to it. I usually hold off feeding them unless I uh, am low on room. You do have your storage, which is now out of little computers. You don't have to go to that lady at the desk. There's more than one storage location. Oh, <laughs> got a little busy there. Ah, oh, the key collection. Collect. I don't have to kill enemies for this one, but I do have to find. You can see in the upper corner that uh, they give me the icon and where the key is that I'm looking for. And in this level they look like little boxes. Although keep in mind, as I said, the forest when you start the game doesn't have those. You don't have to collect them. But uh... Misplaced one. We'll find it. But, uh, the, the forest is more like an introduction level, anyway. The cool thing, though, is once you reach certain level points, you can go back to missions that have to do with uh, earlier stages and already cleared and fight them again but with higher levels and better drops. So you do get your hard mode, it's just unlocked per stage. Okay game, where did you put it? Here I am talking about how awesome the minimap is, and the minimap is not giving me what I need. Oh, there it is. Found the key. I guess I had to kill that guy. Now I'm hoping to get to this boss fairly quick because this is the, uh, the part I was gonna show. And yeah, there are hazards in the level. Sometimes I'm better at uh, dodging them than I exhibited. Completed. Well, yeah, I know that. One of my favorite things about this game is listening to that announcer because he's got such a funny, like, English voice. The code elimination warning. But 
And as you can see down there, system information and stuff like that is translated by this uh, patch that comes out, but not other things. Oh good, boss time. Keep in mind that uh, I can do a lot more of these. I have other areas opened up too, like the desert and stuff like that. And if any of you uh, like this one a lot, I might do it anyway, because I just love this game. But uh, let me know if, if you guys want to see the forest. Just uh, tell me. Uh, next one I'm going to do is going to be the desert. That one's an awesome battle with like a big robot tank thing. So, a lot of robots for that. Look at this guy! Makes the dragon from PSO one look like a joke. And yeah, I'm keeping my distance. This guy actually hurts. I'm doing a tactic that is uh, often used in Mega Man Legends. It also really worked out for fighting pretty much any norm in Resident Evil 4. And that is strafe. Strafe like mad, especially in like 3D Capcom games, enemies don't seem to be able to handle it. They don't, you know, change their direction to try to beat you. Now there's still stuff I have to watch out for with this guy. Because he guns for me more if my party members aren't uh, in on it. Oh, Lisa's down. She'll be back up in a bit. Marlu's using her photon blast. I'm trying to get him knocked down. If I can knock him down, that's a uh, perfect time for me to just let loose on him with my tanks. Oh, didn't work out quite as I hoped. Oh, now Marlu's down and Lisa's up. By the way, the gun I'm using right now is a uh, red drop, which is basically a rare drop the boss in the forest. You have to get those identified, but they're usually better than normal weapons if you don't need to be on the same level. They also look unique. The gun, uh, well, the, it looks like a chainsaw and then a gun. The gun chainsaw thing normally doesn't look quite like this. This one has serrated blades. The normal one just kind of looks like the gun with an oversized blade. This guy must be so frustrated. Look at him. He's like, oh, I'll get you. Oh. <laughs> he blasted right at me. Oh, he's not at me. Oh, that's what I was hoping for. That was good. I got to do my full volley. Regenerating his tail. Oh, he's burrowed. That part I find easier than the dragon from PSO 1. He's not continuously burrowing at me. As long as you're moving, you're dodging. Oh, Maru just keeps Suka. taking it to the face. That's right, pay attention to me. And I keep aiming for his tail because breaking that thing on his tail is what makes him fall back. My home base will actually uh, warn me when his HP starts. Yep, that's what I was talking about. 
I'll tell you, he's getting weaker. Oh, I love the dodge. And by the way, the right bumper will change weapon modes. Oh, didn't dodge right right up. But it'll change our weapon modes, which is how I switch between using my uh, weapon as a sword and my weapon as a gun. Oh, he's getting desperate. He's hanging out babies. Oh, I got hit. Oh, he is unhappy man. Unhappy. How did he... <laughs> It might be the coloration, but I'm kind of curious on how he got bigger on this. I'm kind of low on item I can pick up that disc. That's how you get new techs, by the way. Techniques and stuff come from little discs. I got so many like monomates and dimates, it doesn't really matter. With anything, uh, the bosses in this game, when you get their pattern down, they uh, become a lot easier to fight. With some enemies, like I've uh, discovered the enemy in the desert. He will do more attacks that are harder to dodge and tank. It gets trickier, but you get it. Oh, Lisa's back up. Arlu's down. One cannot live while the other <laughs> not die while the other lives. No, you don't. Kind of a real fight this time around. Last time I fought him, it was kind of a pushover. He must know he's on camera. Although, likewise, right now he's probably like, "Why won't you die?" Simply put, this is and yeah, you, you will stand still to heal on this one. Just keep that in mind. I love it when Marlu decides to actually pass the rest on this. She will occasionally, but right now she seems to be uh, rather satisfied with using the bard on Man, he must be frustrated. You actually fight a mini boss version of him like, much earlier on in one of the Kate's quests. And that one's kind of a pushover. It doesn't even have things. For the most part, like the first version of like why I didn't show him is there's not much of a fight. Now that was a fun. That was fun. Completed. Every boss when they die will leave these little uh, gem, little big gem things. They're all the boss. Oh wow, I've gotta feed my mag to get me some room here. 
As I said before, I haven't gotten my mag to change shape yet. Uh, if anyone knows that I might be missing something that actually plays this, uh, let me know, and I'll get my mag to actually change form. It might just be that he changes form at a higher level in this game than he does in others. Other than that, I'll just finish the list. Uh, this is the first venture into Fantasy Star Online Episode 2, or no, not Episode 2, uh, 2, uh, so many numbers, uh, front of Fantasy Star Online 2. I'm gonna be doing more of these. I got an A this time because I was holding back doing some stuff, but I do often get S's. Oh, that's how it looks down on the planet below from the dropship. This is the thing that you jump into the level with. You saw me do that earlier, but the reflective pool looks pretty nifty. Uh, keep my name in mind on here if you uh, get on the Japanese servers. I'll be doing the desert one next, and thanks for joining me for another Let's Play. Hopefully you guys are liking the 3D ones a little bit more. See you later.